in the name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibin Ra. I would like to just, before we get uh, absorbed into our particular topic, of which I will mention in just a few uh, minutes, I like to, and I hope that you bear with me as I send a few uh, shouts to those who keep me grounded, those who inspire, those who encourage, those who are a platform of strength so that when one becomes weak and begins to fall, they take their strong hands and arms and help lift the voice, lift the body back to where it belongs. Because they know that the voice and the body has a sincere heart and a wish that his people truly breathe free, that his people go on beyond this bondage, beyond this slave-like condition, so they can go on to become a greater people than those they admire. I want to thank those who encourage me, inspire me, and help me in this most important and glorious of efforts. I'd like to send a shout out to my little brother, strong warrior, most intelligent person, one of our great future leaders, although you might not consider yourself a leader, but it is in you. It is there. And when the time is right, you will bloom like the beautiful uh, rose or the beautiful lily. You will bloom and those whom nectar they need to feed from, they will be drawn toward your strength, toward your vigor, toward your true blossoming manhood and your, and your what in religion they call a spirit and your nature that anyone could see that just like myself, you want what is best for us as a people. I send a shout out to my brother Ruben in Chicago, Illinois. My brother Harvey Superboy also in Chicago, Illinois. A brother who just recently did a wonderful, I guess you could call it a couple of posters for myself expressing the Realities Temple Ministry, my brother Michael Freeman, brother Leo Leo One on YouTube, my brother David Brayboy, of course, my sister Fanadia, my sister in the state of Virginia, brother, I mean, sister Brenda, I'm sorry, I'm so used to saying brother so much. But I love my sister so greatly, sister Brenda in Virginia, my brother Foundation, brother Hassan, who is the founder and, and the one who is orchestrating the website called W-A-C-P-T-V dot N-I-N-G. Those of you who don't have a page, please be sure that you add and add your talent 
to that uh, creative page, Brother African Supremacy, uh, Brother Craig, all of my Facebook friends and Facebook friends are steady growing little by little. More and more people are becoming interested and in listening to the voice of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. This is a wonderful thing because they are looking for that which is new. They are looking for change and they are disappointed in the usual, the same old, same old. And brothers and sisters, when we are doing the same old, same old, but we expect a different result, then in psychiatry, this is called insanity. And surely we are not a people who have gone insane, are we? Shout out to Brother Maurice Muhammad in Tennessee. My brother, Michael 13X. My first brother, my first ally, my first friend on YouTube, Brother Jason Williams. My little brother, G-Man on Live from YouTube. My strong brother, the Wacky World of O, also from YouTube. Brother Universal Moore. And last but really, really not least, my student and minister, who is always growing, who has that fire under him, that seeks to join me Join my side or by my side to help me to spread this message of this ministry. Of course, the number one shout is to my brother, also in Chicago, brother, student and minister of action for the Realities Temple on Earth. Andre the Edmund 69. With that said, and I'm, and I'm very happy that you would bear with me because people like being acknowledged. I like being acknowledged. There's nothing wrong with being acknowledged. The only time that being acknowledged or being admired the only time there rises a problem is when we become obsessed, when we believe we are more than what we actually are, when we allow our egos to interfere with proper thinking. And I surely do not want to ever be guilty of that because that is a detriment to myself as a person and it will be a death detriment to us as a people because there is a message that flows from this ministry that is of benefit not only to myself as a person, to Brother Andre as a person, but to all of the 40 to 70 or more so-called black people that live in America if they decide to heed the call understand the message that is coming forth from this podium. Again, going on 10 minutes, but I just wanted to acknowledge these most important persons that uh, are in my circle and I want them to know how important they are and how much that I appreciate their friendship, their support, assistance, and for me, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Actually, the topic is very simple. 
I could say just one sentence and that could be the end of this subject matter. The topic and the sentence that could just end this conversation right now is that the descendants of slaves born in America suffer from being institutionalized. And really, that's the end. Do you know the reason why so-called black people, the descendants of slaves born in America, do you know why we as a people have not gone any further than our past ancestors, even though we have more money, even though we have uh, the vote, even though we are more educated, even we have more of all these things, we are still suffering in a slave-like condition. In fact, we are worse than our ancestors. It is because we do not recognize and refuse to believe that we suffer from being inst institutionalized because we believe that we are free. <laughs> we so free. Spread our wings and fly. We so free. Some of us know that we are not free, but still you suffer from being institutionalized. The so-called Negro, the descendants of slaves born in America, you, we as a people, have never known freedom. But yet and still, we talk about, I want my freedom. I know I have freedom. I'm, a, I'm an American. I'm free. How can you talk about something that you never experienced? What you call freedom is simply privileges. The same type of privilege when you let your dog out in the yard to, to use the bathroom. The same type of privilege when you go to the park and let your dog run around. Free. You said it. I'm gonna let I'm gonna take Lassie. Lassie is on a leash. Lassie is locked up in my house. Lassie is locked up in my backyard. Lassie is my slave. But when I take Lassie to the park, you said I'm gonna let Lassie run free. But it's a false freedom because in reality, Lassie only gets the feeling, the privilege of feeling some type of freedom. But when it's all said and done, you put the leash back on Lassie. And you put Lassie back in your backyard. You lock Lassie up in your house or Rover or Splat or whatever you want to call your dog, your pet slave. That's what you do. Your dog, your cat, your bird, your fish is not free. And the black man and woman have never been out of this aquarium. You are like the fish that has never known the ocean. Only the aquarium. The aquarium is not a lake. The aquarium is not a pond. The aquarium is not an ocean. It is a box of confinement and it gives the fish the illusion of being free just because it can swim around a little bit. And that's all that the black man and woman in America do and have done for over 400 years. You have no idea of what being free really is. You have no idea. The only thing you can do is talk. Some of you would like to experience that, and that's good. And I am hoping that more and more of us really want to be free. I also want to say to you, and I hope that I don't disappoint you 
or hurt your feelings, really, there is no such thing. As long as you live in a society, among others, you must have law. You must have policy. You must have standards where the people would do and they won't do. If you live truly free, then we could murder and don't have to worry about punishment. Then we could steal and don't have to worry about punishment. That's a true free society. And that's savage. But in a civilized society, what you call freedom is that you want certain privileges and you want those privileges to be just and fair. Because you cannot be free. Freedom is a savage state. Freedom brings anarchy and chaos. There is no such thing as freedom. There is no such thing as peace. You have to have some type of law. You have to have some type of control. But just like our brother Neely Fuller Jr. says, what is missing in all of this, regardless to your color, regardless to your gender, regardless to class, regardless to all these things that cause us problems, justice is what is missing. What is being fair is missing. So when we feel we are mistreated, when we feel we are being done unjust, then there comes a problem because now all of the citizens don't feel they are part of the society and a certain group is being favorited. That's why we are in the condition that we are in now because certain people, certain groups are given special favors. There is a lack of justice. So our brother Neely Fuller Jr. says, just give justice and everything would be all right. And it would be. But some of us like being better. We like feeling supreme. We like, we like being able to make mockery of others. And so as long as you have those who want to be better, greater, smarter, and all these different things, you're going to have problems in your society because there's a lack of justice. I want to live how in the hall. I want to be 